So over the holidays, I bought this puzzle. It's a 1,000 piece a celestial planisphere. This is the box it comes in. And it's from 1989, which is uh, surprising that I could find it brand new. I bought it online and it's still all wrapped up. It had its brand new wrap and the manual that it came with was all brand new and untouched, which it isn't now because I've been reading it a lot. I'll show you in a minute. But um, all the little tidbits of cardboard or little dust of cardboard that was, uh, you know, in a brand new puzzle was in here as well. So I could tell it was brand new, but I wanted to get it set up as soon as I could, as soon as possible, so that I could tell that there was a thousand pieces, and there was, so that was great. Anyways, it's by this guy here, Thomas J. Filsinger. There it is. And it turns out to be 27 by, or 20 by 27 inches. It's a thousand pieces, which is a good size, I think. And um, it wasn't that hard to set up. There's a lot of reference points. One thing I thought was cool, it says, uh, I don't know if you can see it on here or not, but uh, certainly on the manual, Epoch 2000, and right here on the puzzle, right under Celestial Planisphere, right that white Epoch 2000, which I thought was pretty cool considering uh, this thing was made in uh, 1989, but the accuracy of the star positions is around our year Epoch 2000. And this is the manual it comes with. It's pretty remarkable, I thought. I was, I was pretty impressed. You know, it tells you uh, the references he used to make these charts. It talks about precession. And it does have an outline in here of the precession of the poles, which is like 25,000 years or something like that. So uh, it's hard to see. But it's a small little circle, and there's one in each in each hemisphere with the precession of the poles. And it talks about cartography and why he chose this way and to, to map it. And then ascension, and this is what's getting me here is the ecliptic. And on the puzzle, there's these little yellow dots. And they go all the way down. And somehow, you can tell which stars you can see at night based on it. And it's confusing me how to figure that out, but uh, I'm getting to it, so. Anyways, there's also the 88 constellations. All 88 constellations are uh, on the map, on the puzzle. Here's a couple I remember. This is the Northern Hemisphere, so that's what I was paying attention to more. There's the Southern Hemisphere, and sometimes like Orion, for instance, is right there, which is in the middle, so we must both be able to see it. Anyways, here's a bear, or some major. Where is he? Hey, I'm gonna turn the light on. There's the bear, and that's the lynx. There's a the crab. Here's Andromeda Galaxy up here. And so when you put it together, you start to, uh, to, to notice this stuff. Pegasus. And then you can start to make references in, in the night sky and, and start to learn the different stars. So my intentions now are to uh, glue the back of it and frame it. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, there's the constellations. Oh, this is interesting. 
It's a point form summary of uh, celestial cartography. So astronomy and cartography and just discoveries in general. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that it was included and it just shows that there was care given to the whole creation. And then here's where we get into individual star data and what are supergiants and novae and so it's quite detailed and here this these little inset photos are what helps you for instance to put the black pieces together on the outside and there's other ones there there's your 25 nearest for instance or brightest 25 brightest so that one is up at the top right there if I brightest. So you use that kind of guide in the guide to help you put the pieces together. That's what galaxies, types of galaxies. Anyways, I thought it was really well done. And this is what it shows like it looks like at night, but it's way more, it's much more brilliant because the Milky Way makes it look nice. It's unfortunate that my camera can't pick it up live, but uh, can't so Let's see if maybe it's giving it gives that effect you can kind of see it glowing in the dark there a little bit maybe it's working all right actually okay well for instance I'll zoom in on the center of the galaxy which is over here center of the Milky Way I mean, it glows just really, really well. It's pretty neat. There you go. Hang on, I'll grab a blanket. It's hard to make out, but with the camera, but in person, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. So, anyways, I think it was a it's a great little puzzle, and they're still available online right now for brand new. But somebody was telling me somebody that came over to see it said it's uh, you know has a collector item kind of feel to it, and uh, you know they're probably gonna like some of them online are upwards of two hundred dollars. I was lucky to get this one for about fifty dollars. Plus shipping, blah, 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 came out to 80 bucks. So, uh, you know, 80 bucks for a puzzle is nice or is expensive, but when I'm gonna put it up, I'm gonna frame it. And so I think that'll be nice in the kid's playroom or something like this, where maybe we'll have a telescope and be able to come in and out and reference what we're seeing. So uh, anyways, I just thought I'd uh, pass along that it's a, it's a great little puzzle and something that, uh, is a beautiful one. Anyways, thanks for watching.